All right, back for part two of our network traffic analysis labs. And this one will continue where we left off from the previous lab, where we pulled out the CNAME string field out of the CNAME header inside of a Kerberos header and applied that as a column to identify Brandon.Gilbert as the user account name from 10.11.11.200. And in this lab, we're going to go a little bit further and learn how to export objects that were downloaded and captured inside of this network traffic file and then we'll do a little bit of light investigation to confirm if anything malicious was found within that object. All right, so on to objective number seven, and we want to identify what executable was downloaded over HTTP and which IP made that download request. And so there's a very powerful filter we can use called IP contains. And basically the way this works is you type in IP contains and then the pattern that you're looking for, kind of like how we used grep previously. And we can use it to search for characters within headers. It's as close as you can simply get to a search feature inside of Wireshark because you can't really loop through the packets like you would in the command line with a grep command. So what's the pattern that we need? Well, it's time to Google. Let's look up and see what a Windows executable file header looks like. Because just like how we have headers inside of packets, there are headers inside of files. So let's see what comes up. We can see we have a PE format listing from Microsoft. So let's check out this documentation. Okay, so what we're looking for are file headers. So we can select that link at the top, it says file headers. And if we look at some of the text right here, it actually says that there's a stub and it is placed at the front of the EXE image and the string reads this program cannot be run in DOS mode. So that could work for us. Let's go ahead and copy this and then bring it inside of the IP contains portion. And one thing to think about is that's really a long string of text that might skew our results, make it too specific. So we can shorten it maybe and just search for this program. And if we need to filter it further from there, we can. So let's just search from there first. And look at that, we have a packet. And I can see in the packet bytes pane in the bottom right, it says right there, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. So this actually indicates that we have a Windows executable file passed through and downloaded in this traffic. Interesting. So we've identified an executable was passed through, but we need more information. So what we can do is maybe right click this packet and follow the TCP stream. And let's see what was downloaded. So there was a get request actually for 40 group.tiff. Now last I checked, a .tiff file should not be a Windows executable saying this program cannot be run in DOS mode. And additionally, look at that host header, acjabogados.com. I, I don't think a user is going to be typing that in. And what's also a good thing to note is that MZ portion, that MZ is actually representative of what's called the magic number. And this is the first two bytes of the file header. Think of it like a stamp, and that indicates it's an executable. And pretty much every file has a little file header stamp like that. And we can see that there's additional fragments of text, so we can get an idea about what might be happening here. There's a Neo chatbot, deletes the current I am frame maybe so something's not right this is not a normal type of executable that was downloaded let's find out more about what this thing actually is now if anything was saved in the traffic we can go to file and then go to export objects and we know this was http so we'll select that and you know what let's actually search for that host name that seemed kind of strange because we might find more things and you know what we just found one so it was the only request Let's go and save this now. So that's how we would export the file outside of the PCAP. If we hit save, we can throw this on top of our desktop and then we can open up PowerShell and do a little bit more inspection. Okay, cool. So with PowerShell open, let's go to our desktop now and we're gonna run a commandlet. We're gonna use the get file hash commandlet and we'll run that against the file so we can identify the hash. So there it is. Now what we can do is we can take that file hash and we can do a lookup online to see if anyone else has come across this strange and suspicious executable. 
and we'll get a little bit more into using these types of open source threat intelligence tools in a later module. But for now, we can go to this website called VirusTotal. And VirusTotal is really cool. At a high level, it's an online service that allows users like us to scan files and URLs for potential malware by analyzing them with multiple antivirus engines and other security tools. It also allows the community to collaborate. And if I have a hash that I uploaded and I put some information on it, someone else can look up that hash and they'll see my notes. And we classify tools like this as a sandbox that so we can throw something through and it's safe and away from our system and it can do some of the heavy lifting for us by identifying any potential indicators of compromise. So let's go and run that hash through VirusTotal and let's see what it says about it. Okay, so not good. 61 out of 71 engines have flagged this as malicious. So we've got, we have malware that was passed through the network inside of this PCAP. In fact, it's been classified as a Trojan and it has a, another short form name for Snowgen as well too. And you can see these red listings, these are all of the security tool engines that ran against the file that we submitted for the hash and they've all detected signs of malicious indicators. The details tab is really helpful too. It provides more hashes that we can look at. Also other types of names that it might've been classified by, the general creation time when it first was released into the wild. And there's a lot of other good information inside of the other tabs as well. Let's take a look inside of the relations tab. And over here, we can see that there are various URLs that this malware could have come from. So here's a bunch of URLs that we might wanna flag and protect ourselves from. We also have a listing of IP addresses that it was connected to and domains. So now we have a bunch of information to protect ourselves and prevent access and block these IP addresses and domains and URLs. Very cool. We also have the behavior tab and the behavior tab, we're gonna get a little bit more into threat modeling a little bit later with threat intelligence, but for all intents and purposes, this gives you a general idea of what the attack life cycle might have looked like for this malware. So what it intended to do from start to finish. And then there's the community tab. And you can see other people have identified this hash and they provide information when they found it, what IP address that they located from, what it might be related to. So you have a little bit of this like community collaborative analyst effort where everyone's working together. When we find malware, we can support one another and provide our findings so that we've already done some of the legwork for someone else and help them get up to speed to protect themselves as well too. Awesome, so let's keep moving along. We need to find out what was the user account that downloaded this malware now for further internal investigation. So we know that the request was captured inside of Wireshark and we've identified it over here going to that host name. And if we look at the packet itself, we have a destination address of 10.11.11.203. So why don't we just filter for this? We know how to filter for usernames using our column of CNAME string spun up. So let's go and do filter Kerberos.CNAME string. And then we have this IP address over here. So we can do an and ip.address equals 10.11.11.203. And maybe we'll get something. And something we did. Well, Candace Tucker, seems you've downloaded some malware and now we have to do some internal investigation whether that was you or something automated and that's when we start getting into cybersecurity land so this is network traffic analysis this is the final lab in the network fundamentals portion and you should have enough foundational knowledge at this point that if you wanted to inspect your own local traffic or grab a pcap somewhere online you could start sifting through it and try to achieve some of these types of similar objectives from here, we're going to move more into the cybersecurity side of things and start looking into how security is involved by building off the knowledge of your IT fundamentals so that we can start achieving some of those core pillars of cybersecurity, which are confidentiality, integrity, and availability.